The global order was established in 1945, at the conclusion of World War II, much like how internal conflicts can set the stage for a new order within a country. For instance, the Chinese Civil War culminated in 1949, marking the beginning of a new era for China. Such shifts typically emerge from wars, which essentially are struggles over the functioning of systems. Post-conflict, there's a kind of leveling effect. Debts are cleared, and a reset occurs, leading to the emergence of new powers. In the case of the United States, the post-World War II era heralded the American-led world order. The U.S. emerged victorious from the war, holding 80% of the world's gold, the basis of currency at the time, boasting the strongest military, and possessing nuclear capabilities. This victory initiated the American world order, in which the U.S. had a significant say in global affairs, including setting territorial boundaries. This phenomenon isn't unique to the 20th century, it's a recurring pattern in history. New rules are established, leading to periods of peace and prosperity. The dominant power's unchallenged position discourages conflicts, creating a stable environment. However, this stability is often a product of the collective psychology shaped by the war. Those who experience the war's horrors typically emerge with a strong desire for peace and productivity. This era often sees reduced wealth disparities and collaborative efforts to build a prosperous society. Yet, as prosperity grows, so does inequality, with wealth gaps widening over time. The affluent can afford better opportunities for their children, perpetuating this disparity. Meanwhile, economies become increasingly indebted, and other nations, including former adversaries like Germany and Japan, rebuild and become competitors. The unique power held by the victorious nation gradually diminishes as global competition intensifies. A new generation, accustomed to prosperity and perhaps less financially prudent, emerges. Additionally, the victor nation often becomes the holder of the world's reserve currency, which is essential for international transactions, much like a common language is needed for communication. However, as time progresses, this landscape shifts, with challenges to the established order arising both from within and from the rise of new global powers. Everyone perceives it as the most stable option and thus prefers to save in it. There are three key forces to monitor, and understanding their cycles offers clarity. First, consider whether a country is generating more revenue than its expenditures. Viewing a country as a collective of its citizens, it's essential to assess if it is accumulating savings by earning more or accruing debt by spending more. After all, one person's debt is another's asset. When a country holds substantial debt and continues to issue more currency, the value of its money tends to decrease. This process leads to diminished returns, escalates inflation, and ultimately drives people away from holding cash and bonds. This scenario fosters an environment of rising interest rates amid inflation, known as stagflation. Currently, this is not a matter of controversy but a visible reality. There's a significant accumulation of debt, excessive spending compared to earnings, and rampant money printing, all culminating in heightened inflation. In such times, holding cash becomes disadvantageous, pushing interest rates up. This is one of the three critical factors currently observable. The second force is internal conflict. This involves assessing whether a society operates harmoniously with a shared mission, or if it is fraught with discord threatening the stability of the system. History has shown that when individuals prioritize their causes over the functionality of the system, the system itself becomes vulnerable. This precarious situation can lead to disorder and potentially a form of civil strife. Signs of this include increasing political polarization and the rise of populism on both the left and right. Populists tend to advocate vehemently for their factions rather than seeking moderation and compromise beneficial for all. Such extreme partisanship can threaten the integrity of the system, as seen in the 1930s when several democracies turned to dictatorship amidst disorder and internal conflict. Currently, we can observe potential risks in the system where, during elections, there is a possibility that neither side will accept defeat. This polarization can drive moderates out of the system, 
forcing people to choose sides and engage in conflict. Historical examples include the French, Russian, Chinese, and Cuban revolutions, where initially moderate movements escalated into extreme polarity and intense conflict. The second factor to consider is internal dynamics, and the third is the emergence of global powers, a geopolitical force evident today with the rise of China and Russia. When a nation weakens financially or becomes internally divided, it becomes more vulnerable. Meanwhile, competing powers learn and grow stronger, gaining ground militarily and commercially. This dynamic is currently visible, with recent events in Ukraine accelerating international developments. In this global landscape, there are two sides, much like the Allies and Axis powers in past wars, with neutral countries in between. The conflict in the U.S. is moving rapidly within this new world order, with developments in Ukraine providing a fresh perspective. Russia and China share common objectives, indicating a strategic alignment. Globally, there's a perception of a dominant power exerting excessive control, leading to various forms of warfare, trade, technology, geopolitical influence, capital, and military conflict. Presently, we are engaged in the first four with China and, to some extent, in a military conflict with Russia through our involvement in Ukraine. The concept of a capital war is embodied in sanctions, which aim to inflict economic pain by restricting access to funds or essential imports. Historical precedents, like the U.S. cutting off Japan's oil supply before World War II, show how such economic measures can escalate to military conflict. This situation also poses risks to the value of the dollar. In today's economy, currencies are often held in the form of debt, not just as physical money. With rising inflation, the value of the dollar, and consequently the debt denominated in it, could be threatened. This complex interplay of internal dynamics, the emergence of global powers, and various forms of warfare illustrates the intricate and precarious nature of the current global situation. The current economic landscape is marked by extensive money printing and a growing fear among nations of potential sanctions, leading to a sell-off of dollar-denominated debt. This scenario is causing a downturn in the bond market. Historically, capital wars, which utilize economic strategies as weapons, often precede military conflicts. This cycle is evident today as countries deplete their financial reserves and turn to economic measures in geopolitical disputes. In terms of future developments, three key questions emerge. The first concerns Russia's outcome in the Ukraine conflict. A win for Russia would mean achieving its initial objectives, establishing Ukraine as a neutral entity, gaining control over its eastern provinces, avoiding severe economic downfall, and maintaining Putin's leadership. Conversely, this outcome would signify a loss for Western nations. The effectiveness of American sanctions, leveraging the U.S. control of the world's reserve currency, is the second major question. These sanctions are a critical tool for the U.S., but their overuse might drive other nations to seek alternatives to the dollar, diminishing its power. The third aspect to watch is the global alignment in this conflict. The actions and positions of various countries, as seen in votes at the United Nations or in trade relationships, are revealing the formation of alliances similar to historical Axis and allied powers. Russia's categorization of countries as friendly or adversarial further clarifies these emerging divisions. These factors are leading to a shift in mindset where the emphasis is on buying power rather than the sheer quantity of dollars. With the declining value of cash, aptly described as cash is trash, and bonds, the focus should shift towards a diversified portfolio. This portfolio should include assets that are protected against inflation and spread across different countries, considering the aforementioned geopolitical factors. This approach aims to maintain and enhance the real value of investments in a turbulent global environment.